to now I, I have to come to the cannibalism uh, because it is quite quite intriguing. <laughs> uh, would you like to explain a little bit further on that? <laughs> Well, as you probably know, during the persecutions, one of the things that witches were fairly regularly accused of was stealing body parts of often of infants, sometimes of other dead people to use for ointments, to use for curses. Very, very popular in, in some persecution narratives, this concept, and sometimes also to, to eat. Um, these body parts and cannibalism if you look at it as a accusation has been leveled at a lot of different minorities over time and um you know one of the minorities that it's been leveled at would well not minorities exactly but i suppose what our own ancestors are sort of known to have practiced it based on archaeological things that we've found that have suggested that you know there seems to have been a certain willingness to harvest bits of human beings and i don't know it got me thinking because i have a bit of a sort of strong area of interest in early human paleontology and stuff like that and i noticed once we found out that as homo sapiens that we've got quite a lot of neanderthal dna in us um i started to think about it in terms of like it was almost like we ate them in the sense of having consumed this other people that we thought had disappeared and gone extinct but really they've disappeared into us um and we don't look like them anymore but we still carry them and it all got me thinking you know from there sort of linking one thing to another and thinking about the way that you know the cannibal motif has been used to take away people's personhood and and in the book i sort of look at a diff few different groups that have been accused of cannibalism and sometimes they're people living right near us that that we accuse of, of eating people and it's it's fascinating to me that when we were living at that time in a culture that was using bits of human mummies and such like in folk medicine all the time where they were powdering out bits of dried humans they, not not even they called them mummies but they weren't all mummies some of them were simply just very dried human bodies that were used in folk medicine for all kinds of complaints and eating them and using them as like um, ointments and all kinds of different things that we were so offended by this notion that some other people might have eaten people and yeah so I, I got into this little loop I guess with a couple of these areas of interest of mine <laughs> It took me down this pathway. <laughs> no, I found that when I've been I researching flying ointment recently, a lot of the old recipes suggested that witches would boil babies for their <laughs> fat to make the yep. ointment out yep. of. Quite yep. why they couldn't use, you know, lard or something. I don't know. <laughs> but apparently yeah, that... it had to be baby fat. <laughs> mm. But it's interesting, I mean, considering that doctors at the time often did use human fat in their ungents and, and like actual doctors, not just folk healers. So it's a really interesting complaint, I think, to make against another group at a time when there was this actual socially acceptable cannibalism going on in the society. And like you mentioned, the Neanderthals and going back to that point it would have been survival wouldn't it it would mm. I'm assuming they would have on occasion eaten each other f literally to survive yes yeah and I mean we have what you might class as I mean maybe not proof but definitely evidence suggesting that they ate each other and that we maybe ate them and that they ate us and we ate each other and 
all kinds of things going back to the Stone Age, that there, there's lots of examples of human bones that have been tossed on the same pile as the rest of the hunted animals that have been eaten, and they show butchery marks, they, they sh show charring marks of having been cooked and the marrow extracted, and so, yeah, it's an interesting sort of topic in that regard because it seems to have been quite normal almost in the past. I apologise if anyone's eating their dinner <laughs> at the moment. Mm -hmm. I hope we have some fairly fun of their food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, thought I'd put that out there. Um, <laughs> yeah. oh. Now, move, moving swiftly onwards from that, but it is a fascinating <laughs> subject. Sorry. And I think, no, I think it is, it's about putting yourself in a different time frame in a different situation isn't it to understand how and why these things happened mm. and i mean some of that could have even been funerary cannibalism where some cultures ate a certain part of an honored ancestor to keep them in their body so there's all kinds of reasons that could have happened it wasn't necessarily survival cannibalism but yeah in a bizarre horrific way you can kind of see the logic to some of it as well can't you well oh, yeah absolutely and i think up until very recently so could our ancestors you know who were involved in the healing profession very much and and even believed that um so this is probably more don't listen to this while you're eating kind of stuff but um the <laughs> the remains of children and babies were considered more powerful at a medical level because they died with all of their life force still intact. Okay. Yeah. That, and that, that's not even witchery. That's, that's actually just a medical viewpoint mm, at the time. Yeah. Different perspectives from different eras. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah. Well, it does in a way.